The Trump administration is now in its final hours, and in the weeks leading up to this moment, there were fears of what the president might do on his way out. Could he start a war? Would he pardon himself and his inner circle? DC is still reeling from the insurrection that critics blame on Trump. But there is something else that his administration has quietly done that could hurt millions of people. Last week, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the US will designate Yemen's Houthi rebels as a foreign terrorist organization, effective tomorrow, the last full day of Donald Trump's presidency. Yemen has been embroiled in a civil war for over six years now, pitting the Iran-backed Houthis against the Saudi-backed government. The Saudi bombing campaign has created what the UN calls the world's worst humanitarian crisis. And now they warn the new Trump administration designation, the UN warns that it could make things even worse by blocking badly needed aid to civilians. The UN says Yemen now faces famine on a scale not seen in nearly 40 years. Up to 80% of the population could be forced into severe hunger. That's 24 million people, more than the entire population of Florida at risk of starvation. And like I said, Trump, Pompeo, and the whole administration will be gone in two days, so it'll be up to President-elect Joe Biden to deal with the fallout. International aid groups and even some U.S. lawmakers are now calling on Biden to reverse the Houthi designation on his first day in office. Joining me now to discuss this, Alcera Leah Whitson, Executive Director of Dawn, Democracy for the Arab World Now, and former head of the Middle East Division at Human Rights Watch, and Shireen al a Yemeni-American activist and assistant professor at Michigan State University. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Sarah, let me start with you. No one is arguing that the Houthis are blameless here. They're responsible for numerous human rights abuses, attacks on civilians, uh, use of child soldiers, etc. So what is your main argument against designating them as a foreign terrorist organization? Um, well, it's a, clearly a misuse of the foreign terrorist designation um, because it's being applied as an instrument and tool of war in order to coerce uh, the Houthis or to punish the Houthis or to reward Saudi Arabia for something that they have long called for. Uh, but it's not being applied in any way that is consistent with the principle of what this terrorist designation is supposed to be about. Uh, the uh, Trump administration cited uh, the bombardment of an airport uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia by the Houthis. Uh, if that's a reason to designate them as terrorists, then of course the Saudis should also be designated as terrorists because they have repeatedly bombarded airports in Yemen, not just once, not just twice, but multiple times in multiple cities. Um, the war crimes, the abuses yeah. of the Saudi coalition far exceed any uh, terrorist actions of the Houthis. And so to apply it in such a politicized, selective way undermines the purpose and meaning of this designation completely. Yes, it does. Uh, Shireen Secretary Pompeo said, in his defense, waivers and licenses will be granted to allow humanitarian aid to keep coming into Yemen. But is that enough to stave off the famine that the UN is warning about? Absolutely not. I mean, there are areas in Yemen where people have already been starving to death for the past several years. Um, famine hasn't been declared in Yemen. Um, my my um, instinct is to think that there are political reasons for not declaring famine in certain cases. But, you know, the UN has been saying for the past four years that a child under the age of five dies every 10 minutes. Um, and so this is an already dire humanitarian crisis. And they haven't laid out any information as to how they're going to allow the um, entry of aid um, when you're going to designate when they designate an entire you know the de facto government in, in northern Yemen where 80 percent of the population lives uh, as terrorists nobody's going to be able to um, bring their aid in aid organizations like you mentioned earlier have been warning against this the UN has warned against this yeah. um, so there's no um, there's no way to see how how aid is going to enter and how 80 million people or 80 percent of the population 24 million people aren't going to starve. Yeah, and it's not as if Trump and Pompeo are known for their great care and concern for Arab lives. Uh, Sarah, the Washington Post editorial board called this designation an ugly booby trap uh, that Pompeo set for Biden, writing, quote, the only way to end the war, the humanitarian emergency in Yemen is through a peace settlement, which the designation of the Houthis as terrorists will impede. Mr. Pompeo will not have to deal with its effects. He is explicitly leaving a landmine for the Biden administration, which does not share his zeal to indulge the Saudis. Um, how does Joe Biden dodge that landmine or overcome it? 
Um, well, I mean, by sending very clear messages that he is going to move to remove the designation and, of course, choose not to enforce the designation. I think that there is a possibility uh, of doing that. Uh, it's a very difficult thing to do to actually formally remove the terrorism designation uh, because it takes time. It's a process that, that uh, has to be had. Uh, and so it will slow it down. Um, but it's going to create a big burden on the Biden administration to create the kind of waivers that will be necessary, the non-enforcement that will be necessary uh, to allow uh, neither the Houthis uh, to disregard any option for negotiation because what have they got to lose, uh, or the Saudis who think, aha, now we can truly crush them uh, by starving the people of Yemen. So let's make one more uh, uh, last ditch effort among our many uh, failed efforts to try to win the war. Yes. And of course, it's not just uh, Shireen that uh, the, the Trump administration is doing the Saudis bidding and helping the Saudis with this war. You know better than most that this war kicked off under Obama and Biden, who also helped the Saudis bomb Yemen and besiege Yemen. Uh, how much faith do you have in a Biden administration reversing a lot of this stuff? I mean, it's it's better to have a Biden administration because at least he's come out against it in 2019 at the campaign trail. Uh, we know that Trump has been very, um, you know, adamant in enforcing this war and escalating the war that Obama and Biden began, um, and even going as far as vetoing a, a bipartisan congressional resolution in, in 2019, um, which called on him to follow the Constitution and not wage war without congressional approval. So he's been uh, defiant, but we know that Biden has spoken out against it. Um, um, has it's part of the democratic uh, platform to end the war in Yemen. I've personally spoken with it, with his foreign policy advisors, who've assured me that this is something that they're uh, very much interested and committed in doing. But um, the fact of the matter is so, that. So, Shireen, um, on that note, let me let me let me jump in there. Let me jump in there. You mentioned talking to his foreign policy advisors. The confirmation hearing for Biden's Secretary of State Tony Blinken is tomorrow. Uh, what kind of US policy towards Yemen would you like to see him talking about? Would you like to see uh, members of Congress asking him about? I definitely want to hear members of Congress asking him about how they're going to end support for the Saudi-led coalition. We're not just talking about weapon sales. We're talking about full involvement in the war, um, intelligence, logistical sharing. Um, um, the Saudis aren't, and the Emiratis uh, rely on the U.S. for training for for every aspect of this war. So it's as much as it's a U.S. war as much as it is a Saudi and UAE war. And so um, we need exact. We need to know exactly when this is going to happen. Is it going to happen in the first hundred days? It must. Um, is this uh, terror um, designation going to be reversed right away? It has to be reversed. It has to be at least not in enforced right away. Otherwise, we're going to see millions of people perish. Um, and so we want to see Congress taking responsibility and um, holding them accountable, making sure that we know exactly what they're going to do and yeah. when. Uh, Sarah, one question on a different but related topic. Uh, there had been reports last month that the Trump administration was considering granting immunity uh, to Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in a federal lawsuit uh, over an alleged assassination plot. Uh, that could then in turn lead to dismissal in another case, accusing him of playing a role in the death of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Khashoggi actually helped fund the group you work with now. Do you think the Biden administration will take a tougher stance on Saudi Arabia, on MBS, than Donald Trump did, than Barack Obama did? Um, well, I think there will certainly be stronger rhetoric, uh, but there will be a test for the Biden administration on whether or not, not only uh, do they move or will they move uh, to give uh, Mohammed bin Salman the immunity that he so desperately wants, uh, I don't think that will actually happen. But whether or not the Biden administration will move to release the Department of Intelligence report uh, that uh, documents America's, the American government's, the CIA's own evidence and information about the murder of Khashoggi and specifically about the Crown Prince's role in the murder. Uh, the Trump administration released that to the Senate after much fighting, uh, but it hasn't made it public. Uh, the U.S. government is now being sued, uh, uh, including by my organization, for this information. Uh, is Biden going to uh, refuse to make this information public? That will be a big test about how different America's relationship with Saudi Arabia is going to be. And, and Sarah, I have to ask, uh, Donald Trump's first trip was to Do Saudi Arabia. He saw dance with the Saudi royals. He's hosted MBS in his uh, Oval Office. What's it going to be like, Joe Biden meeting MBS? Very briefly, we've got a few seconds left. 
Well, I don't think that he's going to meet uh, in the United States because, of course, MBS won't dare set foot in the United States or in Europe because of all the litigation that he faces. Uh, so they would need to find another venue to meet. I don't know what it's going to be like because uh, Joe Biden has very clearly Paul called him a pariah uh, and culpable for the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. So it's going to be awkward. It will be very interesting to see what happens and whether Biden sticks to his pledges on Yemen and Saudi Arabia. Sarah Leah Whitson and Shireen el thank you so much for your time tonight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.